Hi, I'm Charlie. And I'm Liz. And we are the Adventure Closet. And today, we are heading to Minnesota in our 2001 RAV4. Our SUV mini camper that we built ourselves. So come along with us. Hi, I'm Liz, and this is Charlie. We've spent the last two years traveling the US and Canada in our minivan Opal. We recently built out our tiny SUV GOAT to more efficiently take you along with us to some of the lesser known hidden corners of the continent. So come along with us as we immerse you in nature, stories lost in time, and discoveries of buried treasures. Who knows what we'll find next? Thirty-six bucks, half a tank. Five oh nine a gallon here in Washington. We are on the road, and many of you warned us <laughs> to not do this and go our two thousand one Rav Four. But we did. Built out. <laughs> but here we go. We just started our journey. And Fully loaded to the gills. Yes. We are on our way to our second annual sugar beet harvest. So we're excited to go there, uh, make some money, and have fun stacking beets. But we're also excited to see how living in goat goes uh, compared to opal. If it goes badly, we might just run back and grab opal. <laughs> after the wheat harvest. Yeah. So, uh, come along with us. We're going to make some awesome stops on the way to the wheat harvest. Yeah. It's weird uh, being on the road, not in Opal. Uh, yeah. It's just, I don't know, it, it feels a lot different. Very different. And we left behind so much stuff, but we are Stuff. We didn't leave behind much, <laughs> but we left behind some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We left behind some stuff. Yeah. Because we don't have our backpacking stuff. True. And, uh, a lot of our rock hunting stuff. Our bigger table. Yeah. Um, our tent. Half the camera gear. Yeah. We left behind a lot of stuff. Yeah. And this thing is cramp packed, so we're gonna need to make adjustments as we go. We uh, have our first dash lights on, on GOAT. It is the traction control lights and the ABS lights. Uh, not sure what that's about. Not reading any fault codes, uh, but something's up. Hopefully it just needs to be reset. Yeah, haven't even gotten out of Washington yet. This is gonna be a great journey. <laughs> Maybe this is Goat's way of talking to us. Like Opal Adder tire pressure indicator would come on to talk to us. Maybe Goat's saying, ugh, too much stuff. <laughs> Thank you. 
outside of the Colville National Forest in Washington and we've never been here before but there is a free campground so we're gonna check it out. Trout Lake Campground. Oh we're still in the Colville National Forest. I think we're back in the Colville National Forest. There's a camp spot down to the right. Oh uh, we're not the only ones here. We're here. Are they camping? Uh, they might just be chilling. Yeah. It's like there's bathrooms. Wow. It's full service luxury. So Let's pull cool. down to the lake real quick. Okay. No internal combustion engines. Cool looking lake. Let's see if we can find a good spot to camp. Yeah. So there's a sign right here that says warning. A cougar has been sighted in this area. Store all food in vehicles or RVs. Keep clean camp. Watch children and pets. Uh, stay limit is 14 days. We got bed mode made up and it just started raining on us <sighs> yeah the world's testing us we're getting rained on and we haven't had dinner I gotta cook dinner and we bought fish so I have to cook dinner oh maybe it's still frozen uh if I have to I'll set the tarp up <laughs> so we got these poles on Amazon for the back thing for Opal, but I think they'll work for a tarp. They collapse down and expand. Thanks, Tree. Thanks, Tree. We passed a little bit of snow on the way here on the side of the road. Yeah. That's, we're up, we were up over 5,000 feet in elevation. Okay, Tree. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> you want to 
hold this one for me, Jimmy. This is very, very functional, guys. <laughs> Trust me. Big gust of wind comes, we'll be fine. <laughs> we only need it for like a half an hour. Yeah, just not to cook. <laughs> Yeah, I think we can kind of tighten that up and actually it's... Ooh. Ooh. That's something to watch out for. There's a concrete block right there. Um, yeah, okay. Do we need to pull goat forward a little? <laughs> now that it's tied to trees? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think we can hang. hang. Just We just got to remember not to open it all the way. Okay. Okay. We had to go with a smaller table. Which requires a little more setup. Which thank you to our friend Sue for this wonderful table. Yes. Thank you, Sue. This works out perfectly. Although, we went and visited my mom, and uh, she has this four foot table, which is the same size as, um, as the table we have in Opal. And it's full, it folds in half, and I think it'll fit up in the top here, like this one. We may end up getting that table. Either in addition to or instead of. Okay. Table. Right there. Mm. I'll do it right there so we don't open the. Well, shoot. Not very level, Not eh? Not very level. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, well. That actually looks, it, it's not oh, locked. It's technical difficulties here. Okay. That'll do. I wonder if we can find a little rock or something. Okay, next we will get the propane and the stove. Now we're keeping our propane up here. And we got a smaller propane when we were in Canada because it was cheaper. It's like 50 bucks. And it takes up a lot less room. We don't have, we, well, we have a lot less room. <laughs> <laughs> and then the stove's up here now too. Now this is all just a work in progress. We're just testing out this whole situation. We may move stuff around, we may not. It all depends. Um, but for now, all this goes up top. This is the real shakedown. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and for you, for those of you following at home, this hose is an adapter hose that works on like a big five gallon propane tank and it connects into your Coleman stove at the other end so you don't have to use those green bottles which when you're doing this full time that adds up quite a bit and ends up being expensive let's see it just connects right in to here And then this connects into the side of your stove. Voila. Voila. Or All right, let's get this table level. <laughs> it's definitely not level this way. I think it's level enough. Yeah, it'll work. Now, this is all the parts that we haven't figured out quite yet. Yeah, we kind of, I mean, it's mostly organized in here, but we kind of, 
threw things together. Like, there's the frying pan. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. I like how it stopped raining once you got this tarp up. Well, that's why I put the tarp up, so it stopped raining. Yeah. Okay, so the water's got to come out. <laughs> so you can get to the food. We have five gallons of water. Yeah, we got this new water tank uh, because our old one wouldn't fit under the bed. And everything's got to fit under the bed in here. <laughs> All right, and then we have a fridge. Yes. Ow. Oh. Okay. This is a huge new addition, and we've already scratched it up. Yeah, nice, nice patina on it already. <laughs> yeah. And it says it's at 37 degrees. And it holds a lot of stuff. And we bought the fish frozen, and it is still frozen. Nice. So the broccoli is probably still frozen, too. Not nice. we got to cook this. Oh. And oh, it's yeah. It's frozen. That's <laughs> not nice. It's I nice was just, that our fridge nice. works. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, is it frozen solid? Yes. Well, we could have something else then. Okay. Um, we could have that chicken. Okay. Chicken. <laughs> yeah, because this is not going to work. You can have this for lunch. We're going to have to thaw this. That's yeah. crazy that we have to thaw something. Yeah, this fridge is a game changer. Like, seriously. If you've been following us for a long time, you'll remember back when we were in um, Colorado uh, by Mesa Verde, we got food poisoning from shrimp that we had bought just the day before. Um, but before we got this fridge, we for two years, we've been... Uh, living the cooler life and just had a cooler and we the reason we got the fridge is we kept having to buy ice over and over and over again and uh, we just kept adding up the cost of ice and we're like we could have bought a fridge twice over by now <laughs> especially in Canada in Canada ice was about seven dollars for a bag of ice and sometimes during the time we were there when it was hot we would have to buy two bags of $7 ice a day. And this fridge was around $250. Or, what, 10 bags of ice? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it felt like. What? That's what it felt like, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it was nice doing that job over at DigiKey in Minnesota and um, and thank you to your our Patreons as well. Yes. For helping fund our fridge as well. Gave, um, gave us a few upgrades that was much needed. Yeah, even though we downgraded on space. <laughs> Opal, it doesn't mean Opal's not in Opal's the picture not, still. Yeah. Opal's she's, not out of the picture. I wonder what she's doing right now. She's probably just chilling, having a party or something. <laughs> okay, so... We're not doing the fish because this fridge works amazing. <laughs> so does that mean our condiments and our mushrooms? No, and... all this other stuff's not frozen. Okay, so it's just kind of kept everything steady, Eddie. It says it's 32 degrees in here. Which is freezing. Which is freezing. Um, we should probably up the temp on it. Are those frozen solid? They're frozen, but not solid. Not as solid as the fish was. Okay. But the fish was right up next to the uh, the coldest part. So we're having chicken and broccoli. Up the temperature. It says it's at 37. Here, I guess I can... Oh, no. Oh, it's not, it's not new anymore. Um, oh, this is th 34. So the temperature on this thing's not exactly accurate. Um, like it says 37, but it's actually 32. So I'll up it to, uh, 34 and we'll see what that goes in about an hour or so. 
but uh, let's get some cooking going on. We are finding that this is a little annoying having to pull everything out just to cook. I mean, we kind of had to do it in Opal, but it was all readily available right in the back. We have to move a few things around to like get our plates, get our spatulas, and then our spices are now in with the food. So we have to kind of pull the food out to use the spices. So it, it needs some refinement, but we'll get there. Here's the dishes. Got the dishes. All right, let's get to cooking. Because tonight, you're cooking with Charlie. There's some mushrooms over here too. Apparently the oil was not hot enough. <laughs> Okay, so this is reality here. We have a bunch of stuff out <laughs> while we're cooking. Um, gonna have to fix that. The table's too small. The table is too small. We're gonna need to get a bigger table. So we have minced garlic, and uh, we got this stuff called the usual. Salt, coarse black pepper, rosemary, garlic, lemon, and cayenne. It's pretty good. Um, a little salty. But it works. Yeah, I find a little bit goes a long way with that stuff. Yeah, so we're gonna put a little bit of this in the broccoli. Like that. Throw some minced garlic in. You can never have too much garlic. A lot goes a little way with garlic. Yeah. <laughs> in our opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie just reminded me that he downloaded the latest season of Alone, which we love that show. Like, if you guys haven't seen it, we totally recommend it, but we're gonna um, get to watching it tonight. I think my favorite part about the Alone series is the locations. Like, they leave these people, if you've never seen it, they drop people off in these remote locations. Um, They've, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> they drop these people off that have some survival skills in these remote locations and they get like 10 survival items and they have to like hunt and gather and fish to survive. They have to build a shelter and the person who stays out the longest without throwing on the towel wins like $500,000. I know it sounds like another reality show. It's pretty awesome. I like it. I've seen other ones like it, like The Naked and Afraid. I don't, I don't like that. Saw some other ones and they were like pretty laughable, but. Survivor the... Man was good though. Back oh, that's day. right. Back in the day, Survivor Man was good. Yeah. So yeah. Have so, you guys seen Alone? What was your favorite season? And no spoilers. Survivor Man and uh, Dual Survival. Remember oh, that yeah. with uh, Cody and, Cody uh, and uh, the other guy? <laughs> Dave Canterbury. Dave Canterbury, yes. Yeah. Who's Bear Gorillas? He's the the um the other guy that drank his own pee. Okay. <laughs> we never watched Bear Gorillas. Okay. But anyways, long story short, we're gonna watch some alone tonight. Uh, after we eat this amazing dinner that <laughs> cooking with Charlie is making. So, you guys are probably thinking broccoli. Hmm. And then you guys are going to sleep in this little tiny vehicle. Yeah, we are. <laughs> um, that's the reality of uh, living in a vehicle like this. Um, you kind of have to 
be able to eat broccoli together and then sleep in the same van or RAV4 in this case. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. That's okay. They do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's put this to the side and cook the chicken. Don't burn me. I'm trying not to. Whoa, don't drop it. I got this. Oh, that smells amazing. Well, that's because you're cooking with Charlie. Okay, now, now for the chicken. Okay, so this is, this is chicken. It's actually a little thawed, and it's not actually chicken. It is, uh, It would look more appetizing if it was. <laughs> it looks funny. It's, uh, light life, I believe. It was on sale. We don't do any other meat than fish, so we eat the, uh, the non-real stuff. Only sometimes, though. We don't eat this all the time. This is like a treat, because it was on sale. And we have a fridge uh, a fridge freezer. Yeah, we have a fridge. It's not a fridge freezer. It's a fridge or a freezer. Or an in-betweener. Apparently right now it's in between, yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm just gonna throw the same the usual on this and uh, minced garlic again and uh, make sure it heats evenly on both sides and then it should be done. Yeah, we don't want to get salmonella. Yeah, you can't get salmonella because it's not salmon. Okay. <laughs> Cooking with Charlie. Pro tip. You need a theme song. It's time to cook with Charlie. That's all I got so far. Get out your wheat and your barley. It's time to cook with Charlie. I just, I don't know. Maybe. I don't have wheat and barley, though. <laughs> it's got a ring to it. It's I just do this because it looks like I'm doing something, but I'm not. <laughs> Let's get on film. Yeah. You look gonna be good. It smells good. Wish you guys had smell vision It smells like... I can tell them what it smells like. Smell, there's a hints of rosemary and like heavy garlic tones. Heavy! And uh, it's gonna be good. It has a faint essence of chicken. Yes. <laughs> it's like they took a chicken and they like blessed it with the chicken. <laughs> and there you have it. Dinner is served. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy. That's perfectly done. Does it taste like chicken? It tastes like what I remember chicken to be like. Okay. But kind of. You know, chicken is the one thing that people will say other things taste like. Mm hmm Like, hmm, that tastes like chicken. It's not exactly the same texture as chicken, but taste is there. All right, I'm gonna dig in. All right. Okay, so we got everything put away. Liz is putting on our window covers right now. And, uh... We're gonna hit the hay and watch some uh, some alone and go to sleep. This is rough. How many of you are curled up on your warm couches or beds <laughs> watching us? Crazy kids. <laughs> Okay. All right, let's watch our show. It's not easy, but <laughs> then I gotta figure out where all this junk goes. All right, see you guys in a little bit. Also, just wanted to tell you while we're snuggled up here and go today, 
marks two years uh, since we hit the road. So we're starting our third year on the road. It's gone by so fast. Yeah, it has. <laughs> it's been so fun. <sighs> it's dead quiet here. It is. That's crazy. I like this camp spot. Me too. We'll explore it more in the morning. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night. The quote on alone, the art of life is a constant readjustment of our surroundings. <laughs> That's the hilarious. The art of SUV life. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Fight this thing out to the last breath. It's a little chilly and windy. It is. Fall is upon us. Yes. So I guess you guys are wondering how last night went. Um, so, went good, got the bed together. Uh, first thing that happened is the, the footboard fell off. <clears throat> Some of you might have predicted that, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we got it back together. And then uh, you got up to go to the bathroom. I got up to go to the bathroom and the horn started going off, like uh, the car alarm horn, the beep, beep, beep. So loud, <laughs> so loud. So <laughs> then I had to like struggle to get the keys in the ignition to turn the, uh, the alarm off. And then we got back in bed and we started going to sleep after watching our show and um, we both started feeling a little claustrophobic in there. Go figure. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little, little small. Uh, it was like dead still and dead quiet. So I don't know. So then we got out and we cracked the windows a little bit. And, um, that helped. Yeah, that, that, that definitely really helped. I think we just yeah. need to crack the windows um, at night for at least the first little bit. There's fish in there, and it's like I could cast from here to where it jumped. Okay, yeah. sorry. We're out on on the fishing dock. Um, where were we? Oh, so then after we cracked the windows, then we finally got a good night's sleep, and now we are awake and having our coffee and ready to start the the, the next day. I think Liz is going to do a little bit of fishing after breakfast make some eggs and uh, we don't really, we don't even know from there well that was fun that was so much fun don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and check us out on patreon and we'll see you next time bye now bye now